Hey everybody, Dan Sparrow at www.theclinicaltrialsguru.com. I decided to stand up and do this post. Usually I'm sitting down and I'm in my office here and I realize I have no blinds and as I've been watching some of my videos from the past, I've noticed that there's been a glare coming off of my face and that's when I'm sitting down. So it's a little bit better when I'm standing up. So I'm not trying to show off, although I do like this painting behind me. I got it at the Los Angeles County Fair. It was like 80 bucks, but it, I mean, it looks really nice. Anyways, I read an article in the New York Times about clinical trials. And again, it's kind of like, you know, a lot of the mainstream media, when they talk about this industry, it's usually negative, and I understand that. They're going for the shock value, and I mean, they're in the eyeballs business. They need people to either read their articles or watch their videos or whatever. Mm, so the whole point of this blog and and... You know, me and Don, we hit on this all the time. We say, hey, there has to be a balanced view on clinical trials. So we're here. I mean, if, if you've been following us, we've been talking about the good parts of clinical trials, the bad parts, everything else, everything in between. Because most, most of the truth lies somewhere in between. So anyways, I'm not going to get into the entire article. I mean, you can read it if you want. Basically, the New York Times wrote an article about two brothers who did a cancer trial. And it involved one of them dying. And so the cancer trial, just like most cancer trials in this country, they involved two possible treatment options. There's no placebo. Again, this is not India. In India, they do give placebos for these type of trials, even if they're um, life or death situations. In, in the U.S., you cannot do that. You have to give either the study drug or the standard of treatment. So anyways, the story... Uh, the two brothers joined, one died, I believe, and uh, basically there were two treatment arms. One was the new study drug, which was like a pill that was supposed to be way better than anything else on the market. And so that was one treatment arm. The other treatment arm was standard chemotherapy. And, you know, one of the brothers received the pill, and the other one received chemo. And so... The question, I mean, I'm trying to kind of make a quick video out of this, but the question, you know, I guess was an ethical concern was, how can you let someone not, not benefit from the better treatment arm if they're in the trial? And my whole point is, the whole purpose of doing a trial is to see whether the drug works. So in order to, see, to prove whether the particular drug works, you need to compare it against something, against the standard uh, care or, or placebo. Now, in this case, in the informed consent, it should have been plainly stated, which I'm sure it was, that study participants may receive either the study drug or standard treatment option, which is chemotherapy. There should have been no question about, you know, there should have been no surprises here. And... Essentially, it looks like people were misinformed or not really educated on, you know, the exact purpose of the trial and the possibility of not getting the study drug. So it goes back to what Don and I were saying. There's a lack of communication in the clinical trials industry, and, and we know that doctors, you know, sometimes they're in a rush to fill up their studies, and they shouldn't overlook these things. They shouldn't overlook making sure that the study participant fully understands the informed consent. And in this case, I mean... We don't know if he fully understood it or not, but obviously they were both hoping to get the study drug, and one of them did, and the other one got the standard of, of uh, current standard of treatment, which was chemo. So of course they they were both expecting the study drug, which is wrong from the beginning because you should not be going into a study expecting something when there is like a fifty fifty chance that you can get the other thing. So that's a fifty percent chance of you being uh, dissatisfied with the clinical trials from the beginning. So there should have been some clear communication and this all basically boils down to a lack of communication and um, you know combined with the media making this like a huge ordeal and they know how to tell a story and of course they use the shock value but it does illustrate that people out there when they join studies they are they have expectations that may not always be realistic. So if there's a 50-50 chance of getting the study drug versus getting a placebo or getting another drug which is less desirable, 
That doesn't mean you're guaranteed to get the steady drug. It means there's a 50-50 chance. So for 100% of the people to go into a trial expecting to get the better of the two treatment arms is, you know, I mean, there needs to be better communication coming from the doctors and, and the study staff and making sure that the, the study participants are fully aware of the fact that, you know, we would like to change it. We would like to see everyone get the, the study drug, but we know that's not possible. The way they design these trials, 50% of the people will be randomly assigned to uh, one of the two groups. So in this case, you know, this story, the media just, you know, took it, you know, they had to get some shock value, like I said, but it does show that, and it does illustrate the fact that there is a lack of communication, clear communication between study staff, study doctors, and trial participants. And, and uh, you know, as more of these stories start coming out, because we're only going to hear the bad stuff in the media, so as more of these stories start coming out, you're going to notice that there's a big lack of communication between study participants and study doctors, and that needs to change. And we hope this blog, I mean, even if it helps a little, we hope that people will get a better understanding of what clinical trials are, and we hope that people will get a better understanding of what they can expect from a clinical trial. So anyways, hope this video helps. Let me know your thoughts on that New York Times article. This is Dan Sparrow, www.theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Thanks a lot.